are beating hearts on pins and needles. Everyone in the Madrid Arena was. And Sentinels pull it off, and they managed to force a map five on Icebox. What an incredible game we just witnessed. And if anything, it just goes to show for the Sentinels, hey, on split, third time's a charm, baby, <laughs> you know? Yeah, they look back. They were incredible on that map. I yeah. think coming in with a great game plan, their attacking side in particular, John QT was making some crazy calls, just walking into mid, reading these stacks and punishing in the late round. But damn, did Genji make it close with that comeback. Yeah, they did, but I gotta say, this is the first time we've really seen Genji actually struggle in terms of the decision-making, yeah. the information game. And Actually, noting Lackier, a couple of questionable decisions along the way, but his utility usage was amazing. And Sentinels still benefited in that regard. And in that first half, I mean, we had a couple Sentinels multi-kill rounds that had, had no business yeah. happening. I, I feel like Gen G in that first half was, was letting some things slip, right? We have this round where Zekin in one position manages to I come out and hit the nastiest break I transfer call. you've ever seen. And then immediately the round after this, uh, Saucy goes and does this, Mike. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously this flank, the fact we're even showing this replay again, it's criminal, but yeah, <laughs> this was the sort of thing. It, there was time and time again, we saw Gen G just have yeah. uh, kind of things slipping through their fingers, not having a solid grasp on exactly the position of Sentinels and the plan. And look at this man, yeah, just 19 wild. years old, his first global final, almost dropping 400 ACS. He has 89 kills right now. If he keeps up his performance on Xbox, he's on pace to beat the global record for the most kills anyone has in a single best of five series. Right now it's Demon 1 at yeah. 101. Zekin's on track to best that. Oh, very well. With the way that that boy's playing, it's going to be lights out potentially on Icebox. But let's actually go ahead and talk about Icebox because Mimi, statistically speaking, this, this favors <laughs> Gen G going into it. You gotta look at the numbers and feel like, man, this is gonna be a tall order for the Sentinels to overcome. I don't care at this point. I, I don't think the, the players can <laughs> okay. care at this point. It's map five of a best out of five. We already see it, saw it on split. This is where it doesn't really come down to the prep, to what you have ahead of time, to what the coaches have been saying, but form in the server. These boys have been playing for what, three, four hours at this point, putting their hearts into this game. It's about the team who can keep that pace into this final map, can find those big plays. The IGL who can make that adaptation and take home ice box. Absolutely agree. And in terms of the mental, in terms of the emotions here, for send to bounce back, take split back as their own and force the map five here. That's got to be a big boom for them. And you can see, I mean, look, I, I, I got to talk about it. Fans obviously going crazy for Sentinels here goes, you know, goes without saying, but oh man, I can't help but wonder what are we going to get from Gen G on this one? Because there is there's just so many directions that they can elect to go here. But what I think is most important is, are, is there anyone that's like standing out on the Gen G side? Because when I look at the numbers on Gen G, I just see a lot of consistency, Mike, across the board. But, you know, you're really looking for a texture here to pop off and have that standout game. I mean, historically on Icebox, it's been Munchkin, really the one to be, to, to be numerically delivering. Again, had a rough performance here on Split. But, I mean, if we do have a pop-off game from Texture, do have a pop-off game from Meteor, then actually uh, Icebox could be really interesting for things. I think it's going to be about that Jet head-to-head, -head, honestly. Yeah. Tekken is looking white hot. It's the same for Texture last map. And also, this one's really interesting because a lot of the times with new Icebox, we get different head-to-heads. We get to see the Gecko KO versus the Harbor Viper or versus the old default. This is straight up Gecko KO versus Gecko KO. Both these teams playing that new standard of composition, which means they're going to be hyper-aggressive, using those flash combos to set their jet up, having tons of util to re-clear in the mid-round. I think all of that util, all of these four maps we've played thus far, really comes down to this and that head-to-head -head between those stars. It's safe to say that this is one of the best Masters Finals we've ever had. I think the had. best. Probably the best, the yeah, best yeah, you Masters know, you're Finals, right. yeah. The best. Let me go ahead and say it with my chest, because honestly, man, I, I, what we're getting here, just to, to go ahead and quote the John Cutie line, it truly is absolute cinema. A game where you got Gen G taking it, Sen taking it, the, the constant left and right hooks that we are seeing to make a boxing reference and contextualize it here. That's what it feels like. It feels like a slugfest, guys. Who's going to walk away with this? Are we feeling Sen? We feeling Gen G? I mean, I'm still leaning Gen G. I, I have to give it to them. That's Again, nice. st your guns. statistics coming in. I agree with Mimi's point, obviously, about the emotion, the mental game that's on display here on the stage. But 
I feel like Genji are going to be able to drag this across the line. Sentinels are hot out of that map number four. I, I got to believe in these guys to take it home. It's always the hard way with them. It, it, it definitely has it's been. Ne it's never, never a easy. An uphill struggle. I, I actually saw Kaplan at breakfast this morning, and I was like, hey, man, what's going on? He's like, hey, man, you already know. We just got to do it the hard way. <laughs> he just looks 10 years older now. <laughs> yeah, bro, my guy Zekin, he's <laughs> aging poor very eyes right now. Might be able to drink coming out of this one. All right, well, let's go ahead and see. As far as the agent select goes, nothing crazy, as you pointed, Mimi. It's going to be that Gecko KO, Gecko KO. Both these teams know how the other plays. Genji is a good on this map in the past. They're favored here, but this is going to come down to the individuals. Pacific will either lift their first ever trophy, a redemption arc for so many of these players on Genji, for their rookies coming into their first ever tournament, or it will be Sentinels joining that elite few of organizations to lift two international trophies in Valorant. Yeah, and looking at Texas to be the one to step up here. Alongside that, it's got to be Lakia and Munchkin to really enable him. This is it. It all comes down to this. Map five and to determine who lifts the first trophy of the 2024 season. Let's go ahead and find out and send it back over one final time to the one and only Brent and Sideshow. I don't think the Madrid Arena has really seen anything quite as electric as this. Two teams pushed to the limits. Map five, Icebox are staging ground set. For both of these teams looking to tussle and tangle potentially get an edge over one or the other. For one at the end of Icebox, all the glory. The other will be gutted to have come so far and go away empty-handed. Texture takes a little bit of space over towards A, but that knife indicating, I think, that it's going to be a bit of fake pressure. Yeah. Sentinels have already stacked four players over towards A, ready for Gen G's classic flash dizzy engage. But they're not going in that direction, and I think Sen are just starting to realize before Tens takes contact. Wondering where they might be. Thoughts creeping into their heads, wondering, oh, is mid exposed? Got to try and watch those angles. Tens gets off the angle. Munchkin's, Munchkin's trying to sell it. It's, it's only him always, here. Yeah, yeah, it is just this lone player lurking up. Still Sen choose to stack the bodies towards it. In fact, they full board it. Munchkin was thinking for a moment of calling his team back. You saw Gen G doubling back towards mid just for a second, and now they've started walking their way into B. You're right, Sen, they bought this hook, line, and sinker. Now realizing the errors of their ways, Dizzy plays the groundwork now to try and take towards this B site. The man with the plant down, but it's an open angle here that wasn't actually smoked off. And it's not available for them. Still fights ready to be taken here. Sentinel's trying to get fast onto the approach and hot on their heels. Kill him to Lakia, it evens it out to 4-4, four to four, but you've got to think the advantage now to Gen G. Sassy's going to have Dizzy back online, I think. Was he able to pick that one back up? Surely. Chicken. Late lurks, Elsis seeming like he might be aware of it. Drifting back and forth, what a shot, straight to the Cranium. Sassy defusing is already on half. Wingman. Sassy defusing, Wingman, hello, already on the half, but it might have just brought them that critical, crucial lifeline munchkin from the side. The attack from second is that uncertainty, but he's defended in time by John QT, you absolute beauty. What a way for Sen to get back in. And that's after missing the read in the round. They were forced to play retake, they got a nice little spam kill to open things up. The pick on Talaki is huge. But the defense of Wingman, and then the defense again, as John held it down, huge. Yeah. This map, we're going to see whether the difference between experience and lacking it makes, makes the difference between a trophy or not. So many players on Sen that have been in positions like this before. Some new players as well, like John, who's been calling a lights out game and playing one too. Exactly right. I mean, it's a chance, a history on both sides. Of course, Gen G looking for that trophy lift for Pacific for themselves as well as one of the you know, most success, successful iterations of a Korean roster we've ever seen. It's here. Forwards now into the angles. Elsis retreating and away with the turret is covering that angle there with Munchkin caught out into the open. Still a plant down for Gen G. Can't be too much more behind this. They are dropping and toppling. Very diligent play by Sentinels, making sure that they deal Hello. with the lurk, diligent, but not diligent. G not clearing the corner. Speak of the devil man texture. Makes a good go of it. I don't see how Karen wins this it. though in a 1v3. Now with a fragment nade, force him out. Not possible. The open to drop. 
So a little bit of damage done, but not too bad. Double Bulldog and a Guardian save into the next. And you're right, Brent. While there's history on the line for Gen G, Pacific, they've never won a trophy before. Gen G could not be closer. It's only Paper X in that final against FPX at Copenhagen, yeah. who were in a similar position to this, map five, and it slipped away from them. But not only are they on the precipice of making history, but when you look at the two people at the top of the scoreboard here early on for Sentinels, Sassi and Tens both wanting to get into that, as the desk said, very exclusive club. Double trophy lifters. And Sen as an org would only be the second org ever to have two trophies. Wouldn't that be something? The first and the last, or at least the most recent. I hope we don't stop doing them anytime soon. <laughs> I certainly hope not. Sen looking aggressive at the start of this round. Going forwards with three players over towards A, and Genji get funneled into a B hit. I think Sen look very confident and comfortable in playing the B retakes. They seem set up for it. And also, you've got to be aware that Genji at some point could try to flash Dizzy combo into Snowman. Yeah. That's another thing that Sen might be ready for. Dizzy's exchanging the handshake there in the air. The shots are fired off here, but the plant's still down now for Genji. Getting into the post plant. Again, that weaponry isn't good, but Util is. Look at that. It's a coordinated effort. An absolutely filthy spray transfer. As Lakia takes you with the final blow. Put an end to any of that funny business. Does not matter how good your utility is if you're not able to get the kill onto Lakia as he sprays down four. I mean, so many players that he was fighting there just didn't really seem to have the guns out ready to take a duel. No. Not anticipating that somebody would have gone in front of all of that util. Oh. That's spectacular. That gets his ult online. That can really start some momentum going. Huge play from Lakia. Bye. Yeah. Yeah, seen sorry. The big stage, seen the big scene before. Even way back in the day. I was just going to say, Brent, by the numbers, this would be disaster for Sen, if you care about them. Zero and six on Icebox Sentinels since May 2022. God. I mean, different roster at that point, basically, right? It's a, yeah. But essentially just not a map that they've ever had success on. Does it matter in a big moment like this, though? I would say it doesn't really. It's mu it, There's so much more to it. The emotional aspect, playing to each other's forms, cooking up plays on the fly. But you can stop this one here from Gen G, and they do with the knife. It's a good one. Thrash. Be stopped and stunted, and the full group up again from Sentinels, looking like they are really ready to fight this one. Tooth and nail seems to be the call. Everybody through now with the thrash, setting it up from Sassy. It hasn't been dealt with here still. Wingman forwards, attainment not online, and they are really trying to flood in and through, but Gen G. And the high ground positions on high, on high, tying the top of them over. Celsius, the difference maker. Right when his team needed it, two versus two, and guess what? Spike dropped down, top nest. Wingman delivered that one like a juicy little delivery. Ooh. Speaking of delivery, Sassy out wide, but Celsius again. It would have to be the ace, and it's shut down in its tracks. Great try from Celsius there, but just not quite enough to overcome the player disadvantage. Sen have a clear game plan of how they want to defend against this. They're not getting caught by the flash combos at the beginning of the round, but they use their own utility to get back in, doing a retake before Wingman can even get started, making sure to break that as well so the spike's lost in enemy territory. But Genji got too many picks as Sen were trying to flood. That round win for Genji has knocked the economy of Sen. Celsius one away from the lockdown too. Certainly something to fight with if they can get picks early. Doesn't expect the angle though. Meteor, be close to the corner, swinging out, only gets the body shot, so 100 damage done and already texture. Gained all that ground, scaled rapidly on the approach. Looking to pick apart this Sentinel's players that are left standing. And this top four 10 position is one where Genji were able to get value in the previous round. This broker. <laughs> ah, just creeping right into it. Yeah, and by the way, the, the, throughout all of this, Karon has just walked <laughs> up B into Snowman and is calling for his team, listen, you don't need to take the risk of going into A. Yeah, you're favored, but why even bother with it? Let's go B, let's make sure that Munchkin gets his ult online for the yeah. next round. 
keep this snowball going. Play it safe. We've got players in forwards, advanced positions. I mean, if there's any pushing out opposition here by Sentinels, look, it's going to be captured by Lackier. If not Lackier, then Texture. Looks like a great game plan for Gen G here. Not just applying crazy pressure, pressure over towards A. There it is. But also being able to get the lurk in on B. The, the Gen G A hit is so powerful. And really, that, this flash dizzy lineup that they use with Munchkin on top of pipes and then Lackey are following it in afterwards, it's crazy hard to deal with. And that means that Sentinels are starting to stack A to deal with it more and cheat over towards the A side. And Karen's found within the first five rounds that opening on B as a reaction. Chomping at the bit for the chance. Already thinking ahead about how to stop Sentinel's counter strap. More importantly here for Gen G with these recurring wins. Rounds online, they have big ults. Try and punish and keep that snowball going. Now the knife wasn't broken, so Zekin tagged up here. Players have to watch the belt position, at least on that high ground approach. Wall up in his face. There is some danger here. Up close, it's all about the reactions, but again, they could come from any direction. No command, and it's a jiggle. Almost ante anticipating and expecting there to be that level of aggression. But still tense. He's in that top position with the operator. Still, it's a half clearance, half clearance, and punishment in place. Beautiful adaptation from Sen. Deciding to take the fight to Gen G. They know that the classic Gen G exec starts from pipes control. And so Tens is already up there, using Zekin as a distraction, essentially. Yeah. Everyone's going to be focused on the operator, shutting them down, trying to punish them. And they just end up running into Tens' waiting arms. Munchkin, the IGL, going to take a moment to see if he can win this round. Does he have an opening still? This isn't going to be a full save where he uses it as a timeout. He does still have chances here. I mean, the money's stacked. Yeah, make a go of it. Spotted, plant, now 1v3. Sounds into this one here, but it's Munchkin who he needs to seek out the weaknesses, really. Will Sen give him any? Doubled up, shoulder to shoulders, an updraft peak here from Zekin. So he's just clearing all the potential possible spots, but there is that blind spot. There is that blind spot. Munchkin eventually cleaned up, but oh, and his team, I'm a believer in almost any scenario. Now that Munchkin's had his go at winning the 1v3, he'll have to start thinking about what went wrong in terms of the macro of that round. Did they need to put more B pressure in order to pull players away from A? Was it that they need to be applying a little bit more utility to clearing out pipes before they go for the exec? These kind of things are going to be racking through his brain as the score's at 3-3. Three to three. Really good job. Really good positions. Zels is clearly happy with that one. And Sen don't start this round with a stack over towards A. I think already anticipating a change up from Gen G. There's not one coming. Gen G happy to opt into that brawl. And knuckle fighting. Picked up by the knife, slowing it down for but a moment. Now waiting for it. All right, time to strike. Big ultimates for them to use to try and get themselves into this. In fact, it's on the other side of things. Do they have anything to deal with Zelsis? This lockdown contacting and walking right now. Finally, the mollies being used to try and take that backside control texture. Oh, he's lineups. Deep here it comes. spotted lineups. Oh, missed. missed! Against the wall here. Moshpit has to be committed. Will it break? Yeah, no, no, because he needs the fragment as well. So the additional util just doesn't add up. It was all missed in time. Tens forwards here. There is the tainment. Fragment nade, does he expect it? No, he does not. Meteor again taking matters into his own hands, and he's stuck himself up into that forward position. But finally, that would shut down. Black here cannot withstand it. This pressure is just immense. Sentinels with a successful retake. And part of that has got to be down to the fact that Munchkin missed the nade. Every team at this point has a setup to try to counter that lockdown. We're talking the best teams in the world. Of course they have setups for that. But it got mi missed somehow, the fumble from Gen G. I don't know what piece of architecture that hit onto. I won't claim to know as well, but... It's just on a door frame by the look of it. Devastation. Pioneerist of differences for Sentinels to take the lead here in Let's map five. Grand finals on the line.
Meteor Karen creeping closer to those ults, and Lakia already has his. It's gonna be difficult for Zekin, I think, to really get a peek if he decides to invest the Thrash. Oh my god, the knife away! He just disrespects it, and Zekin is out of there on top of the ropes. He does not want to be hunted down and away, but is that the Taman? Where's the help? Dash through, Tent is there! Finally, support arriving, but Lakia cleaning up that pesky player close towards yellow. But Sassy's done enough just by staying in an open area where the rest of his team could cover him. Uh, spotted in the window. Oh, yeah, by the turret. Yep. Great turret position there. Utilizing the new window that got carved out of tube. Real read here for Sentinels. But again, have to maintain these advantages when they are handed to you. And if you lose that fight into mid, suddenly three versus three. Have a peek at things here. Out, open timing against him. Second, he loses his fight, and just like that, it's turned. Absolutely brutal for Sen. Great punishment on these peaks by Genji. Reaction test here for Zell. Yes, he doesn't even need it. Blind is a bad, but he still sprays him down, but he can't follow through with the second kill. One versus two. Knife out John QT, not anticipating it. That pace and tempo injected into the round by Genji at just the right moments. I love it too because while you're talking about the post plant aggression, the pause in the round baited out these little plays. I mean, Zekin didn't know exactly where to put his crosshair. And Tens going for a peek under Tube opens the win up for Genji. That's got to be frustrating for the Sen coaches. What a gift for Genji. as anything. No imbalances here when it comes to the rounds. Now a fight taken straight to them here. Opting into the scrap. Zekin, there's no way you dash into that angle and he is punished. Wow, what a flash from Munchkin. Just bleached the eyeballs of Zekin and Tens looking to try to take the fight. Oh, you said the Dizzy didn't get broken in time. No way! <laughs> what a wall bang! Right through the wall. Tens still not going to be removed from this spot. He just sees it, head poking over, but now has to respect it. Players all around him. Sassy, your turn to strike back if you can. While the iron is hot and hot it is. They drop him. No entry into the site. Stand your ground. Say your piece. The Vibe Merchant on his feet. Genji cannot crack this A defense. I've not seen any team put up as good as a, a defensive setup against this as Sen have. Multiple layers to it, right? The second going aggressive at the beginning, drawing attention, tens up on pipes, and then crossfire setups on the site. And yes, Sen are overstacking A, but they're doing it at the right times. They're actually getting the read on when Genji are executing. Genji need to throw a few fakes of their own into it. That's something we've been talking about Sentinel's attack side the whole time. They need to try to pull people towards A and use that B lurk timing that Karen found in round five. Still anyone's game, though. Oh, absolutely. It's not like Sen have figured it out, and that's them with the trophy in hand. Yeah. Lots putting up a great players. fight on a bad map for them. And here it is, target, rich environment. The wall obscuring, hiding. The intent of Gen G, but out wide, that's Munchkin. No kill to be claimed, but Zekin, let's give it up anyway. Now, the pixel angle. Holding for it, it's going to be that high low and a peak with a dizzy on top of things, running and gunning forward. Second, drop down, one kill found, but already the pit is down and out, covered up the site. Munchkin's weak. He's going to try to knock himself, you should get the run. full res. Oh, they go for the lockdown as well. Lockdown play. Using it to clear them all the way back here, so Sentinels won't be able to withstand their ground here, but there is that gap out towards the back here. It seems like there's some hesitation. How do they want to try and fight towards this one? It looks like now the plan being committed. Still with that pit here, with the ults all the way through. Now Thrash to set it up, and it has cleared the way through. No! Timing! Timing! Caron! An absolute menace! In a 1v2, Sassy! So much to do. Mosh, rebounds, pit still alive and active, but it finally fades, and look at it. It's hectic, it's frantic, he's looking this way and that way. Wingman out! Can't collect the kill! You can see the nerves at play here just by taking a look at normally a calm and very experienced player. What is this as well? That's everything. Karen being able to dodge that thrash is everything in this round. It's a beautiful idea. Sassy and Tens play it superbly. Karen. Making the play to dodge it, keep the pit up. Five to five, Gen G. They 
came into that round with two people with only sheriffs. Yeah, I mean, the money wasn't good. Some three rifles to play with. Undeterred now by that one. Fast play, fast approach. Over towards A, Sen. Stacking it with players. No, this time playing it for retake again with Zelsis lockdown. I mean, they must realize, though, that they got kind of lucky with Munchkin missing the fragment grenade before. Look how good the flash dizzy is. Yeah, just can't break it, can't withstand it. Here comes a lockdown, though. It's fast by Sen. Is Just there anything to, to break it? Push no. it back right into the flank, Sassy. Sassy, Sassy! He's caught in the open. Didn't withstand it with his gun out. He thought Genji were going to fight the lockdown, but the lockdown came too early. Genji weren't in position for the lineups. Zelsis. Zelsis in mid. Catching Meteor, crucial to the round. Success, orb in his face, blooms and blossoms fading away. Here's the footsteps, here's the running gun. Zelsis, awareness off the charts. Pit dropped down too. But dodging that one with the detainment, the thrash not getting anything, and the decay damage, there it is. Putting in work with Celsius leading that charge still. The spike, it went down. Wingman able to plant it in the midst of all of this. But this pit, it's not a post-plant pit. It's for Sen to go for the retake. And they got all that space still, have to clear through this one. Caron has a snake bite, at least one with the tap. And now they're flooding through onto the side. Now left what a flash. Flash. flash! Magnificent Munchkin to deliver. And he's got to stand and do it now. The tap, forcing out the bullets, no more left in the chamber. What an incredible beginning. Could be set at an absolutely tied first half on a map where, by all accounts, Genji should be hugely favored. But I don't feel like I'm seeing the nerves hit the Genji players. It doesn't feel like a collapse from them. No, it feels like Sen stepping up. It definitely does. The adaptations they've made and the awareness of how Genji want to play Icebox, loving the way that they're defending. The pit there from John Cutie was immaculate. Celsius awareness too. And the flash out from Tens just all working really nicely together. And players rallied, reinvigorated. Deep knife gives him peace of mind there, so Tens can earn himself up to his ult. Wasn't pushed back in a full group up by Gen G. They're aware that sometimes the Sentinels players have pushed on defense. Remember, they caught Sassy pushing out of B in the previous round after they'd applied their pressure on A. Wait too long, the knife might be back online for Tens to just throw it from Boiler. Tens has his ult to be able to work with too, so the closer they get, the less they can really rely on the Viper wall to do anything for them. Do they have an idea of where Tens is? He's set up for another knife lineup. Here comes the knife again. Might get bad info though here, actually. Or oh. yeah, Crashes back over to A. Yeah, that knife caught onto Munchkin. But then Tens is still rotating off. It's really orchestrated. I mean, they just know. When the orb's up like that, they only catch one onto the knife. Yes, they could cut noise, but Zekin holding from the top rafter position here. Plenty of angles to adjust and choose from, but they are walking right into the one that matters most. Dash online, backs away, Sassy, close now. In their faces, willing to take the fight straight to them with only 25 seconds left. It's the final round of the first half. And an important one at that, wingman broken. That's the confirmation. Gen G has to follow through with the weaponry and the guns, and they're finding their own place, but it's only down to one. Texture, Soul Survivor breaks it down. Munchkin late to the party, and jumping around the nerves at play. Sentinels can feel it. They've got the lead at the half on a map they weren't favored on. They were banking on a 3-1 finish to this series, but 3-2 would do the job. Heartbreak on the horizon, perhaps, for Gen G, as they were looking at the first trophy for Pacific and now have such an uphill battle to be able to make that a reality. What a finals we have here. Absolutely insane stuff. Send it down to the desk. They want to break it all down, I can tell. The electricity in this room is on real as everyone is on their feet and honestly just blown away by what we've been seeing in this game guys not just are we getting great ideas from Gen G, but we're getting even better ideas from sentinels on a map as brennan sideshow were noting hypox that they were just not favored in yeah and i think sentinels achieved the primary objective shutting down the main win condition which is this a site execute josh was talking about it after that though the adaptation from sentinels is perfect they read the game to perfection start Stacking towards B, baiting Genji into their stronger setup.
For eight of these players, they've never been in a grand finals of an international event of this level before. For two of them, they're rookies in their first ever appearance at an international. You can see the nerves, even in the veterans, the shots from Sashi shaky oh, yeah. at times, but what matters is how you convert in the end. That was a half of hero plays, of yes. moments towards the end to come back. But Sentinels is up. But at this halftime, this is the last chance, really, for the coaches, for the teams to talk together, to come up with that this final plan to lift that trophy in front of them. This yeah. is it. I mean, you've seen some of the cracks start to show on the side of Gen G. We sure. were, I mean, Josh even referenced this as well. The pressure getting to them, some questionable decisions, a couple of misplays here and there. Is this where it all comes apart? Pacific has been in the finals before. They've never lifted a trophy. Genji want to make this comeback happen, but Sentinels, you can see it in their eyes. They're standing up on the stage. They can feel that trophy. They are ready for it. This is it, folks. The next time you'll hear our voices, we have crowned a world, well, excuse me, a Masters champion. But hey, you know, well, this champ. matchup feels quite global in itself. Let's go ahead and send it back over to Brendan Sideshow to send this bad boy home. The tension is palpable, energy building in the arena. You can see it, we can feel it. History will be made right here on this half of Icebox. Gen G won every single pistol the last time that these two teams played in the upper bracket final and walked away with a comfortable win on two out of three of the maps. They need this one. Open face by Charon, almost with the punishment. Tagged down by the turret, just seeking to at least destroy it and remove some of that mid-round information. That's not the only piece of aggression in mid. Texture, Lakia, still trying to get posted up there, making sure that Sen don't play in that area. Jump spot from Tensier, but he's out wide now with the face in top of the Dizzy. They have to give up this space here, but Genji might seek to try and fight this one. Wingman, he's already in the fray, through the back of the side here, broken down. Plant out in the open, but behind the box, second, finds his mark. Precision being the name of the game, but Genji not willing to give up even a scrap of territory. No map control, Five and no down. gain really. Fall of Genji takes to, oh my goodness, two, but eventually brought down. Three versus three, and the spike's still not retrievable. Oh. It's a spike position. 30 seconds left. They keep getting tucked behind this box over and over. Karen, though, he took so much damage earlier on, they could just spam him out. 20 seconds, roughly, in the round. It all comes down to this for Sen, and a pistol round. One to stand, one, two, fall! Sentinels are feeling it! Zelts is on his feet again. And Sen in the driving seat, despite having that map veto disadvantage because they had to come through the lowers. Sassy on that stage for the third time knows that it can be done. He, every time he'd made it to a grand finals before, went through the upper bracket, but he didn't always win. He knows it's doable. Energy just is truly, truly palpable for Gen G. A shy investment. Utility, maybe a sheriff of Meteor to get something done, but this is Sentinels in all likelihood wrapped up to that ninth round. Depending on whether or not they go into the stack, I really feel like you can't count out Genji even when they only have pistols and Meteor, who hasn't really been hitting this map, the only one with the sheriff. If Tens goes down and they pick up the Stinger, maybe something can snowball off the back of it. Sen are playing this so cautiously. They do not want to give an inch to Gen G. Caution can spell defeat sometimes. Knife, no info, it's caused to rotate. That's an amazing timing for Sen to start to hit A. Tens no has read way. this one perfectly. And just like that, we talk about it, the tiniest of differences affecting so Where much Where are you more. going, mate? Where, Where are, you are you going? Stinger from that range. All right. Sen's getting away with all sorts of murder. It's a massacre. In through the back of the site, but he gives up his life in the end. I can't believe he took that decision, but I think that shows you the confidence on play. Sen setting up for the aggressive post plants. Gen G's composition can be very potent when you allow them to get into retake scenarios. Oh and Sen are clearly planning to play forwards even when this turns into rifle rounds. You can see the kind of angles that they're taking. Gen G are going to struggle to get back into sights if they allow Sen to walk in like that. 
Yes, it was a gamble. Yes, they needed to try to make the play. But what a beautiful read from Tens there. Saw the knife whistle past him and realized an opening could be his. A four round lead for Sentinels. Genji, unfamiliar position that they're in here in this grand finals on this big stage. Now we're going to do the most, they're going to try and steal their hearts, calm down the nerves, get some form of collection together. Because the map is running away from you, and not just the map, it's the series, it's your chance of etching your place into history. Texture has gone for a glass cannon operator this round on the anti-bonus. Triple stack over towards A. The knife catching Sassy over there. And Texture already starting to come off that aggressive B long line. It's all has to pay off. It just has to. Taking a gander. Walking back over. To the angle now behind yellow box. Lots of angles to really choose from too. He can't expose himself to Zekan's position. At any point here, he could be getting walked up on. That's why you see him just going for the check. And he just doesn't know. He just does not know. You are open to being timing here. He's taking a risk. But risks are necessary in this particular position. All up. Everybody crossing. Texture can feel it now, and it's going to be tagged up by the knife. Has to respect this now and back away. No, he's just out in the open. No man's land. Flash, though, eventually respecting it and backs behind the wall. <laughs> Genji trying to be fast. Now with this rotate plan tonight. Shut down here with only 33 seconds left now. Calvary has arrived. 30 seconds All five left. players here. It's 25 seconds left. How are they getting back in? That's the question, isn't it? Waiting for that regen util. But again, there's only 20 seconds remaining. Got to get a move on and it needs to be now for Sen. What is the game plan? Wall up, just about. They've Having got to push fuel, forward. Push forwards and that's why oh. Tennis is there. Underhanded, flash through, takes it. The fight straight two into Mijia on top of bridge. Genji though, surely the guns prevail. It's one versus two. There is that value. Rifle upgrade. Celsius here. Is it even planted for it? I'm not even sure. Tucked to the corner here. They know where he is. Wingman sets its sight onto it. Lackier half on the defuse and even more. No kills to be claimed. No kills to be collected. Gen G narrowly avoiding it, but they need to keep these guns. That is so rough. Losing the op in that situation. They knew that they had the round secured and they still couldn't keep that supremely important weapon online. Nerves in these big moments certainly hit. Zen, yes, it wasn't the most successful round in the world, but that was their bonus. They were coming into it with Stingers, Spectres. And they've hurt the economy in the sense that Genji coming into this one with double guardians and no operator. That is huge. They know they don't need to deal with that in the next round. Million scenes here. Seen that one before with a deep knife. Gives him that chance for Munchkin to try and build up that all. But here it is, fast and loose. It's a call made here by Sentinels. Looking to disrupt. No command. There's no abilities here. So Sass is going to be able to get that plan down. So again, into the post plan situation we go. Genji going to be tested now on their retakes. Genji are looking for the lurker. Coming around throughout mid. There isn't one. Yeah, just trying to clear it out. Sassy can play so far back and just work off his thrash. Munch can have some kind of knife to be able to deny this. Bosh pit, flash, through and out second. How the hell is he alive there? Thrash now finally being used, but it's offloaded all the volleys as well. Thrash broken, media, wide texture. Trying to claim another one here, Beeman dropped down to 10 HP. 10, surely he falls, surely they go down. Half, out, Munchkin. Has he bought enough time? He's got too many targets to deal with, too much indeed. Small smile on the face of Zelsis. Throwing in the wide swing, knowing that the aim is going to be at its shakiest in this, the latest hour. Zen creep ever closer. It was a tough one. They had to hold off all sorts. The swing that came through here, or in the previous, to be able to deny the wingman, I thought could have been punished. Yeah. But Genji just didn't have it in him. They've been stuck. Paralyzed at six, the Sen creep up and up. Three rounds away now. Within touching distance, they can see the trophy in front of them.
what they've been working for since October. Honestly, all throughout last year as well, through the, the turmoil of their roster, of trying to figure out an identity. And since adding John, his first time on the big stage like this as well, doesn't appear to be a rookie. No. He's been delivering in every twist and turn of this tale that is the grand finals, this best of five. It's just a ludicrous scenario that we stare ourselves at. Sentinels holding this lead on a map that they haven't won since May 2022. No. And Gen.G have looked fabulous here. They wrote the book on how to use this Gecko KO composition that Sentinels ended up taking for themselves. Yeah. And now to see Sen out playing them, this is what we were talking about earlier, Brent. It's not always the game plan or who's won in the past. When it gets to big, high-pressure moments like this, it's can you deliver? Do you have the determination in you? Timeout that was taken for Gen.G here. They have to pick themselves up. We've seen comebacks on Icebox before, on the biggest stages of the world. But it takes a special kind of team to be able to pull that one off. Oh. Molly misses the Nana Swarm. But going off the sound cue there, the turret still gets retracted. Yeah, pulled back. Gen G do not have the weaponry to hold on against this. The knife collecting onto two, at least, possibly even three there, indicating that it would be an A execute. Meteor gets pulled over to reinforce Munchkin. And then goes back as Munchkin comes. There is no noise. The re-hits working really nicely against Gen.G and the way that Munchkin likes to make hard reads. Only one tag there with the knife. That is going to be the go button. Pressed here by Sen. Not just that, but they're pressing the advantage, scaling deep into the back of the site. Only giving an edge to them. Zekin is tucked deep, and there's going to be that supportive util. Look at that. Ten's already holding for it. First signs of life from Gen.G. A flash, and Molly is going to go flying. And there it is. Dizzy. Be broken, not quite, just sailed right over, but a bit of miscommunication out here. Texture, the knives at play, the knives at work. He's gonna try and slice and dice to victory. Gen G finding that footwork and the ground gained and granted to them. Two versus two, a weapon, at least with the upgrade. Meteor is gonna be holding this one, he's gonna be defusing this one, but already the wall fades and topples away. Half needs to be earned, and he does get it, but time against him entirely. Celsius again is there to make sure the safe pair of hands. Another player who was there at the very beginning. And he's 18 and 8, making sure to be the backbone of this team. Emotional leader for Sentinels, thriving under the pressure making sure that every one of these tight moments is closed out. Gen G, they must pick this timing to respond if they want any chance of forging their place in history. It has to happen now. Pressure against them. Uber crumble. What makes diamonds? Texture misses the adjustment. Can't quite hit the snap to the side and now pushed away from the angle. In fact, even activates the dash, anticipating like it could be a follow through, but it's not. But Sentinels he's getting out of there. He's getting good information here, Bren. The fact that Texture popped the dash and got back on the angle is telling Gen G to keep three players A. And they have Lackier on pipes too. This is looking like the way that Sen wanted to defend. So here's here, Zekken! Matters into his own hands, leading the charger with the dash that just collides right into the collision of 410. There needs to be the adjustment, it's not there! An inevitability! Texture in a 1v3. He's got to try to hold on to the last shreds of hope in his heart. But it must be feeling heavy. He knows that this is Sen likely to get up to 12. Look at the triangle they formed as well. Crossfire setups. It would have to be the play of his career, and he knows it's not possible. In the movement. In his posture. You see that he's just forced to take the smart play and back off. But this has got to be devastating. The silence in the Gen G camp as they would allow Texture to play the clutch, settling like fog. 
Memories flashing back. Where did it go wrong in the series? We were favored on split, weren't we? Icebox, surely we had the advantage. How are we in this position? Six rounds in a row that Gen G would need to take, and Zelsis, he's on his feet. The round was still going on, and he's already celebrating. Orchestrating the crowd. HSK head in hand. Thanks. And this is it, the precipice. The line has been drawn, and Sentinel's willing to cross it. And this will be them as an org, as players, as individuals, etching themselves in the history books. But one last hurrah for Gen G has to put a stop to it now. Thrash clears through, that's entertainment! Takes the drops down, but he's fallen prey to it. Hunted down. Up to Lakia. He's called for the reinforcements, but this is it. It's a brutal scenario. They're picked to pieces. Thread unraveled. Sentinels can feel it. The ult even forced out a meteor here to try to keep the horde back. But they're in a 3v5. There's nobody on A. Where's the win condition? It just looks like Sen are going to have a free ticket to A. Second's going to make a play down mid and it gets cancelled. Why would you even bother taking the risk? Play it together. Thrash, second round. To clear the way through. It's Munchkin standing his ground. Knife just a little bit too late here. They can feel it now. Pressure mounting. Genji stacking, but they will topple. They will fall. The rifles are too good. 1,000 days and counting. Sentinels. Maintaining our relevancy. 30 seconds left. Spike planted. The last time they were at an international event. Last time they earned any sort of accolades. Toxins going up. And Caron, from rank to rookie to tier one play, left to stew. Pacific's hopes and dreams laid on his shoulders. Gen G's hopes and dreams laid on his shoulders. But how much can one man do? First one found, second one not there, it's over! Sen City, here to play, here to stay, and history has been made! The Sentinels organization leapt to stardom, became a household name because of the win that they got in that first ever Masters event. They have struggled, they've been clowned on. Last year was devastated, but this group of players has done it. They put Sentinels back on top. The best team in the world to open 2024. And I can't believe it happened like that. Five maps, Pacific's hopes dashed. Hopes and dreams, and that's what they'll remain, but for Sentinels, proud of how far they've come here. Genji will take a bow. It's a curtain close finish, not how they hoped, not how they liked. It was supposed to go differently for them, but they just couldn't pull it over the finish line. They've a still made history. They've still made history, but that trophy is not for them.
sight here as every single member of the Sentinels hoist that trophy over their head. A long and difficult path for each and every one of those guys on that stage. What a run. A journey that stretches over a thousand days. Sentinels are finally back on top, solidify their start to this year as world champions. Madrid will forever be known as the second coming of Sentinels. They did it the hardest way possible. They played every match in the offseason, grinded since October. Every possible game in Americas. They went the long road here in Madrid and all five maps in the finals. After over three years, Sentinels joins the very few to have two international trophies in Valorant. An unreal run from an unreal team. Guys who joined in a unified vision to bring a trophy to the fans of Sim City, to the organization that has stood by this game from the very beginning. And for them to do it in the way that they have done it, taking the, taking the hard road, Mimi, this right here is something that, oh boy, it's a, it's a special moment for sure. And you see Tenz on that stage. He's been there since the beginning, since that first trophy lift. Went through three years of turmoil, of grinding it out in North America. Unable to make another run happen. But now he has that trophy. Cannot believe how they managed to put this one together. But also, I do want to say real quick, commiserations for Gen G on one hell of a tournament as well. They played hard, they played this team as tough as they could. Pacific's got a lot to be proud of. But on this day, Sentinels got the better of them. But I will say this much, I don't think that this is going to be the end of us seeing this rivalry between Sentinels and Gen G because I want more. We're bound to get it. You see Zekin lift the trophy just days after his 19th birthday. Crazy. Actually crazy. To even put that in and, and having, I'll go ahead and say it now, solidifying MVP status here in Madrid. Just an individual performance for the history books. This kid has been waiting for his opportunity and he finally had the right team around him to make it happen. Sassi as well. Champions 2022, the last time this man felt a trophy yeah. on a completely different team with took four new risk. members around him. He's made it happen again. He took that risk after winning a world championship with Loud, decided that he wanted to bet on himself, go and join the Sentinels, come to the Americas region, not alongside his Brazilian brothers, but instead joining a lineup that was mixed at the beginning, that was struggling. And now for him to be right here, I mean, it's just unbelievable. And for Zelsus, the man's more than just a salesman. <laughs> He's the guy who yeah. kept him in it. You saw him on that last map, standing up, shouting at every moment. His teammates have said he's the reason they play for. He reminds them what they're after. Yeah, this I mean, is it. They don't need a reminder anymore. Yeah, his contribution in and out of the game today has been so visible the whole way through. Regardless of when the wins came for Genji, regardless of when the wins came for Sentinels, he's been on his feet. He's been elevating his team today. Of course. It was a back and forth affair between both of these teams and it really couldn't have gone any other way. When you think about the great finals that we've had already in the history of this game, the short history of this game, uh, whether it's Fnatic versus Loud, EG, Paper X last year, some great matches across the board. This one, most definitely a special one as it just goes to show Mimi how the game has just continuously evolved. And I'm just so impressed in Sentinels staying in this series. The final map not favored to them whatsoever, but they played their damn hearts out and yeah. earned that trophy. John QT, his first international event as an IGL, regaining oh, with the Captain. Cap yes. regaining yeah. with Kaplan, the coach who he played with 
what, two years ago now, back in Wild. Tier 2, failing then, but reuniting and lifting a trophy together here in Madrid. And I'll be honest with you, never the easy road for Sentinels, but bouncing back on Split, righting their wrongs from previous series, and then closing out on Icebox, it's just the best way to crown them. It's the fact that they did it on Icebox. I, I, I saw uh, Anne, I saw Leo and John need them all in the back, and I was like, guys, I think statistically speaking, it's going to look really good here for uh, for Gen G, but instead it is the Sentinels who rise to the occasion and are your Masters champion. For now, let's go ahead and hear from your champs. And now from Riot Games joining us on stage, we have some very important guests that are joining us to celebrate and congratulate our winners. We have a uh, head of uh, president of esports, John Needham, of course, uh, a global head of Valorant Esports, Leo Faria, and our wonderful Anna Donlan, head of uh, what is it, studio, Valorant Studio head. Amazing. Please um, you know, just go ahead, celebrate with them. And I feel like, Madrid, I haven't heard you enough. I feel like we have to give it up for Sentinels one more time! Madrid, lo habéis estado haciendo de locos. Menudo partidazo que hemos tenido en el día de hoy. Os habéis portado, ¿eh? Habéis sido unos magníficos reyes. Muchísimas, muchísimas gracias por venir hasta aquí y por celebrar con nosotros. Now, as in for the interview, you ready? Since I'm gonna start with you. Of course, everybody's chanting for you. But after three years, you can say that you are finally back. Talking about being back, your mom is right there. Don't get emotional, because I get emotional too. What does this mean for you? You lifted that first Masters International trophy and you get to celebrate this one as well. Honestly, it's just an amazing experience getting to do it with these guys here. Uh, being able to lift it once again, and of course, a big shout out to the amazing audience here in Madrid, Spain. Uh, appreciate all the fans of Sentinels, and thank you to my family. Le he preguntado que qué significa para él, claro, después de tanto tiempo él estuvo en ese primer trofeo que, que levantamos en una Masters Internacional y obviamente se siente increíble. Por supuesto, os da las gracias a la audiencia que ha estado aquí porque habéis sido lo mejor de lo mejor y con este equipo se puede cualquier cosa. Now, second, for you, you are probably now the best duelist in the world. Do you consider yourself to be that? Yes, he is. He is the best duelist he in is. the world. He is. he is the best. He is the best? He is 100% undoubtedly the best. Okay. Um, you do not consider yourself the best, but you're definitely different, right? How would you consider yourself different? Uh, I'm just... I'm just, uh, I'm just willing to do the job. I have the best teammates in the world behind me, the best support that a duelist could ever ask for. They make my life so easy. That's pretty much it. Yo le pregunto si se considera que es el mejor duelista del mundo y él dice que, que pues que no, que la verdad que no lo tiene tan claro, que es realmente el equipo el que hace que tenga eh, tantísimo éxito. Pero todos sabemos, lo estamos escuchando, que es el MVP probablemente de esta Masters. Celsius, I need to hear from you. I know what you're gonna do, but please give me a bit, the best of both worlds, okay? We know we have seen you on stage. You're given everything. Of course, going to five maps, the vibes need to be up, and I feel like you've been in charge of that. Yeah, I mean, there's a joke always going around that I'm only the vibe merchant, so it feels really nice that I got to lift a trophy, especially with these guys. Like, they really believe in me, everything I bring to them and everything they bring to me. And for once, it feels like we have a real team who everyone wants to win, and I'm just glad we got it done. Anything else you want to add? By the Sentinels Bundle! que celebre, le pregunto que cómo ha estado manteniendo la energía tan arriba, sobre todo cuando nos vamos a un quinto mapa y él dice pues que todos sus compañeros lo hacen bastante fácil, que sí, que él está considerado eh, ese tipo de, de persona que siempre tiene las vibes arriba y desde luego que hoy lo ha demostrado Sassy, this is your second trophy right, but you have been competing for a very, very long time, there's been some ups, there's been some downs, how do you see this moment in your career? I think I'm old, I know <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I've been like, I think I've been here for like 10 years already playing esports. 
Uh, I don't know, I'm just grateful. I'm, I, I consider myself lucky to play so much like good teammates like Zach and Tyson, Jordan, John. Also the coaching staff made a great job on this tournament. And I don't know, I'm just happy to be here and happy to be get my second trophy international. Yeah, that's it. Obviamente este es el segundo trofeo que él consigue, pero lleva compitiendo muchísimos años también en otros títulos. Me hace la broma, ¿no? De que a lo mejor es un poco mayor, pero la verdad es que está muy agradecido de tener al equipo que tiene, de, de poder eh, estar aquí y de celebrar todo esto y de seguir ganando. La verdad que un momento muy humilde para él. Now, John Kitty, how are you feeling? You feeling good? you coming into this tournament of course some might consider you a rookie but what you did here during this entire tournament but especially today as a fresh you know IGL coming into the big stage what do you think has been your biggest struggle that you faced during this tournament biggest struggle uh, I don't know our biggest struggle as a team was just like not playing like ourselves we know we're the best team in the world and uh, yeah we just need to play like that pretty much Yo que le quería preguntar que, que aunque ha tenido dificultad porque obviamente no lleva compitiendo tanto tiempo como los otros, ahora llega a este stage tan grande y no se viene abajo ante nada. Dice que con lo que más han dudado, con lo que más les ha costado es jugar como ellos mismos, sabiendo que son el mejor equipo del planeta. Now, Kaplan, you're in uh, for last. We have been hearing your thoughts during the tournament, some things that you agree with, some things that you, you know, your ups and downs uh, as well. But what has been your biggest learning point from this entire experience? I did not know the resilience my team has is, was possible. And I, I, it, it means the world to me. I don't think we would be standing up here having won if we didn't have the hardest road in kickoff. And maybe if we didn't lose two days ago, we just get back up and we keep going and they fucking want it. And whoops, they really, okay. really want it. And, I'll never forget that people can want it that bad. And I, and I love them. We love you. We all love you. Me preguntaba que cuál ha sido, pues, eh, desde luego, con las opiniones que hemos estado escuchando de él eh, durante el torneo, que qué ha sido lo, pues, lo, lo que ha aprendido ¿no? de todo esto. Dice que de no haber perdido hace dos días, de no haberse visto contra las cuerdas, no se habrían visto en esta situación de levantarse, de darlo todo y, por supuesto, de ganar este torneo. Let's give it up one more time for Sentinel! to have for this tournament. Thank you very much to everybody that made this possible. Oh my God, this is a very wholesome moment. Thank you very much to everyone for joining us, for enjoying our passion the way we did it. Everyone from production, working behind the scenes, everyone that made this possible, every single team. Thank you very much for this. Muchísimas gracias a todos por venir aquí, por disfrutar con nosotros, por compartir vuestra pasión minuto a minuto. Ha sido una experiencia alucinante. Muchísimas gracias. Esta es la primera, pero no la última que estaremos aquí. A beautiful moment with a team that has fought tooth and nail for this right here, for that trophy. That moment. That moment. And it's something that they will never truly forget. But man, what an event this has been, guys. You talk about one of the most explosive tournaments that we've ever had this in the history there. of this game. I mean, no one knew who was going to win it coming into this one, Mimi. And boy, oh boy, was this one a banger. Pretty much every roster coming into this year had massive changes, had new expectations. But Sentinels, they've been grinding since last October. They got their roster set. They found their identity, finally. And it worked so hard to get to this point. You heard it from Kaplan the hardest road possible. But that's how they got here.
Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's really, really great to hear him talk about the resilience because I think that's one of the key things here to close out this run in Madrid. Uh, I mean, it's it's taken so much. You can see how much it means to them as well. Somebody is cutting onions out there, but <laughs> I, I just, yeah, it, it's so fantastic for these guys. Yeah, and of course, for Sentinels, this is only the beginning because this is literally the beginning of our season. We had the kickoff tournament, something a little different to spice things up at the start of the season. And now we kick it off here in Madrid, but there is just so much more to come. Guys, this is, this is gonna be awesome. What a great season we have in front we, of us. We, we gotta top that now. Yeah, somehow, <laughs> it's gonna be hard. <laughs> somehow, some way, we have to top the absolute cinema that we just watched here today in Madrid stream, uh, Madrid, Spain, excuse me. Now, folks, I'm a little verklempt over here, but before we go, we wanna thank everyone in this arena who came out, who poured their heart and soul into each and every one of those games. We wanna thank our incredible production team that has worked tooth and nail to make this broadcast happen, whether it was here in Madrid, over in Dublin, our broadcast partners all around the world. We also want to thank the talent team that makes this incredible event happen. Without you guys, I, I mean, my job is pointless, so thank you so much for being lovely people. And most importantly, we want to thank you. You who tune in and break records with us week in and week out and support this awesome game. This is only just the beginning, folks. And we'll see you at the International Leagues. We'll see you for stage one. And we will see you very, very soon. Take care, everybody. Bienvenidos a la gran final del Masters So excited to be here. This tournament is going to be definitely one that nobody wants to miss. Give me Just keep throwing, Gen G. Keep Just throwing. keep throwing. Okay. This is really the year of young blood, of new teams stepping up. The stage is so much bigger and the stakes are so much higher. It's Valorant. Anyone can lose. He's got the spike in his hands. No teammates. No one near at all. Bullets hailing down onto it, but his head just peeking out. And the oh! right can be stopped. The KC bundle. We need the KC versus Sentinel game. Who wins the whole tournament? Mm, I want to think about it, actually. Unbelievable. This guy is not the Lisan Al Gaib. <laughs> I want to just take my moment to go crazy about Les. Because for right, my money, me, coming okay. into this tournament, he looks like the best player in the world. Oh my gosh! Yes! <laughs> How do you feel going up against the former world champions in Laos? I wasn't playing when they won champ. Oh, that's clean from texture. Get another. Show us what you got. <laughs> This guy is absolutely phenomenal. Wait down, wait down! You roll your R so good, actually. <laughs> you know, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were, you kind were, of. Yeah, I was yeah, close. Yeah, I don't good. want to try it yeah. again. This is going great for EDG. Nobody with three kills, and now it's just one standing. Ten bullets, and it's only one needed for Smoggy. EDG finally best in Paper X. Brent, I know that you're not really used to being right, but actually, Swissology. Yeah, Swissology right so was correct, <laughs> actually. We are Xiao Chao Yi Di Ji Suor in the Ji Ba! Benji Fishy versus <laughs> Tenzi Fishy. <laughs> <laughs> please, by the Sentinel Bundle, please! You can't help but love it. I hope you guys at home can hear how riled up this audience is. Looking for someone. It's tense to connect, but oh, what a shot from Rienz! Second, trying to do the dance, and he's, he's just surely you've seen him, he's just gonna dive in, he's gonna get in his face! Oh. Beautiful! <laughs> Sentinels on their international debut with pure success! Forget the bundles, forget the clout, this is two teams, number one seed in their respective regions, going at it for that straight shot to playoffs. I think Satchel's now in towards the back of the side, Shin! Nasty! <laughs> 
They haven't cleared back. No. Oh, oh, wait, one tens. Down. No. No. The number one seed taken out. Sense City here to play. Again, there's a smoke to deny them a meteor in an aggressive position. Just doesn't seem to be missing a beat. Genji will be the second team to make it through to the playoffs. It's St. Paddy's Day, so I decided to get a little bit in the spirit, you know what I mean? Also to cover the Grays. Who better to send some people home than Pansy and Hypoc? Am I right, guys? You're not wrong, GB. Wow. Absolutely hate everyone. You're on the money. Uh... <laughs> Life's now pretty questioning what the hell's going on. No idea about two E's, but a fantastic watch from him in the end. That is Sadak having none of what they're trying to sell. It's done. FPX will be going home and now live to fight another day. No more of the fun. You hear the music, it's done. Buy the heretics bundle, go, everybody. Yeah. Buy the heretics bundle. Half clear it's oh Benji. He's blinded. He does not care. Oh, oh, I'm so good. I'm so good. Go, sit down. Go, 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 sit down. Go, go, sit down. Sit down. One after the time, the hammer swings down and out onto the anvil. And there is no hope, no chance in hell. Paper X eliminating the Spanish favorites. EDG has been the number one Chinese representative, and Loud was the one to stop them last year. They have a chance to do it again. Smoggy's on all fours. Ao Dong tries to get back no, to no, 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 no. A obliteration of EDG as Loud make their way to the playoffs. Monye can be put to test, put to task. Oh, blinded, and Monye just popping up over towards Shybox. This guy's on for it. He's absolutely on the money today. We've got back to back regional rematches in our first day of the playoffs. Somehow this has come back into a winnable scenario. Just needs to hit the bullet. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Fighting to a nail. John QT. Where's he pulled that one from? Nice boy. Sen look to take their appointment with Gen G in the upper finals. You stole his ace. Did I? Yes, you stole his ace. As I should. As <laughs> I should. So, yeah. Today, our final four teams becomes a top three. I don't want to get into predictions here, guys, but. I don't want to jinx anything. I, I don't want to get into it. You don't want to get into it? I'm not jinxing. Nope. These are the analysts, by the way. Fido Genji Bunder. I've had enough of bundles. <laughs> I've had enough. <laughs> Under Fury is popped. Push up by Sassy. What? And a headshot angle. One by Texture with two kills and a third. <laughs> Hello, guys. An absolute demolition of America's number one. This is the match for Paperx to prove if they're ready to lift a trophy in Madrid. This is set up to be an explosive game. Having a defuse might make a difference. Paperx might free. Going forward, right click <laughs> away. Plenty of util left where that come from. We'll force mine free out into the open. Kawasin seeking to deny this one. Oh, oh, running oh, it down. Oh, Paperx seal it away. Loud. Drop it out. See you later. Sent to the airport. The day belongs to W Gaming. Both teams had to overcome a lot of challenges just to get here. It is going to be about who can show up and get into that grand finals tomorrow. The race is crowded. Just looking at what it's going to be of these two teams. Alex! The TP, the TP is obscene. He let, oh, he let second. second wraps this okay. map up in a bow. Yeah, and they've no idea about really Sens. Now it is time to shine. Sen, <laughs> playing map two. One tap, one tap. The paranoia does not land. And Marty Edge, what a moment for him. Can he get the pin? Yes, he can. Paper X taking us the distance. They are never down. I'm waiting for that cross, sharp as ever. He's getting one, he's gone to three! Sentinels are going to the grand finals! America's last hope holds true! Again, so cool to have some of these creators come out here. Do we get our dreams? We do. Mixwell, up on close. We've got Beanie the heads well. ahead. Let's go! Follow up here. Well, Mixwell finds one, another one comes to will close out the three gates. Looking to get proactive, here it is. That's what I'm Got waiting ultimate, on. Oh, yeah. there, coming in. That's beautiful work from Mimi, showing us some pure action, stunning. Oh. Oh. Oh.
barrel as well, noting that final player's position. Picks off 78 HP. Oh, we'll find it. Come soon. Oh, it's a four K. And a fair fight, and none of it. No, not the knife. Oh, he's done it with a knife. Team Spain picking up the show match victory. It's been a difficult road for both of these teams to now being in the main event. And it's now time to determine who walks away as the inaugural champion of the season. Is it the America's number one or the Pacific number one? We're ready for war. Well, yes, it doesn't cover it. Texture alive and kicking, working his way around, but he's being bounced. Deal with Munchkin. Smoke down, grabbed and out. Dash forwards, but Munchkin again. They weren't expecting it right from behind. Too much to deal with. In D Gen G lead the charge here, taking map one. One flash play out and collected all sorts of kills. Oh, every round, let's go! Lifeless Baron in nature, oh! but he snipes him anyway. Oh, At least there, another kill found and out and defended. You're joking. So fast with the moves, yet Sentinels shut it down. Taking all the way, spray down Hammer. Will be it. Plenty more action where that came from. Oh, oh, oh ridiculous! Yeah, right click, gamble, incorrect. Oh, the body blow. Two one v two, one v two, rushing. Oh, no way you expect this, and this could be it. This should be in the map, done and dusted. But it's not done yet. The job isn't finished. Collected and corralled to him in a one v one second. Let's go. Let's go. Question and fires it straight to Celsius. <laughs> no motion, but a top plan. One v one, one v two. Sansi removed. Bullets left in the clip. Smoke out. Open the interior. Slackier, a lot to overcome, a lot to do, and it's just impossible. Map five is on the cards. Look at that. It's a coordinated effort. An absolutely filthy spray transfer. Your turn to strike back if you can. While the iron is hot and hot in. Out, Munchkin has he bought enough time? He's got too many targets to deal with. Too much indeed. But how much can one man do? First one found, second one up there. It's over. Sense City here to play, here to stay, and history has been made. Congratulations to your Masters Madrid champions, Santana. They controlled their own destiny, and now they can finally say they are champions! Tengo mucha cosa que decirte ahora, pero antes de empezar quiero que le demos sin freno. Si tú quieres podemos empezar de